the joy of asking. Heavenly Father, as we gather together in your name, please show us what you want us to hear from you this morning. And may we learn from you through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So one morning, I was uh, searching uh, for a subject to speak on, and uh, I prayed, and uh, I asked the Lord for his direction, and uh, presently, he led me to Matthew 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Seriously, do you have any idea what a joy and comfort to me it is to know one whom is all-knowing and all-powerful and to whom I can go to in time of frustration and upset? Seriously, did you know that there is joy in asking? Because without asking, there are no answers. When I was young and living on my own, I witnessed my older brother, much loved older brother, experiencing great frustration in his relationship with his teenage daughter. Not being a practicing believer at the time, he didn't think of going to our Heavenly Father for wisdom and direction. My heart hurt for him. God wants his children to ask him questions. The qualification is that anyone who asks must be a believer. In 1 Peter 3, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against all who do evil. If a person has no interest in God, then God certainly doesn't hear their prayers and questions. In Revelation 3, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. When we open the door to our heart, God comes into our lives and we have the confidence and we know that he hears us. In 1 John 4, or 5, and this is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Now, that is exciting. If we're in a difficult relationship or facing a difficult situation, we have confidence. We have confidence that God hears us when we ask for his guidance and for his leading and for his healing and for his direction. He gives it to us through the work of the Holy Spirit. Even God's one and only Son asked for guidance and for relief from his Heavenly Father. However, Jesus was committed to doing the will of the Father at the same time. And he went this is Jesus in Matthew 26. He went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, 
my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as thou will. We can ask anything of our God. However, we must ask with the right attitude and with the right motives. In James 4, you ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. If, for example, one is down in Las Vegas, by the way, the sin central of the US, and he asks God for that big jackpot he's working on. Don't expect him to answer in the way you're hoping for. If we are believers and call Jesus our Lord, we must obey him. Otherwise, we are just mouthing, just speaking words. And Luke 6, and why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? If we are, if we are believers in Jesus and all that he has done for us, then we ask God in the name of his son, as Jesus himself said in John 14, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And John 15, you did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. That's why we always end our prayers saying, in the name of Jesus, we ask. As we just read in the above verses, our asking should be for the purposes of bearing fruit in our lives and in the lives of others. The fruit of increased faith, the fruit of a closer walk with him, the fruit of growth and spiritual maturity in ourselves and in those around us, those we come in contact with. The fruit of helping others, bearing one another's burdens. The fruit of loving others, that is not just thinking of ourselves anymore. The fruit of drawing others into a personal relationship with Jesus. In John 16, <clears throat> we read, truly, truly I say to you, if you shall ask the Father for anything, he will give it to you in my name. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. You see, even the scripture writes about the joy of asking. In our living from day to day, we see God answering the questions we are asking. We give joyful thanks to our Heavenly Father. Even as Geraldo and Khaleesi did today. Hallelujah. Yeah, Ephesians 5, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God. Colossians 3, and whatever you do in word or deed, 
do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Ephesians 5, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God. One big thing that I learned from my friend Art Ward is to give thanks when we ask even before God has given his answer to us. We give thanks before. In Colossians 3, whatever you do in the word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, <clears throat> giving thanks through him to God the Father. The apostles did, uh, they did what they taught. Paul writes in Romans 1, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. In walking closer to God, and his son, Jesus, we find that indeed our faith is also growing, like asking God in faith to move mountains. There are many, many kinds of mountains. Even the mountains in our lives that we do not see any way of overcoming even those that might make us pull our hair out at times, God can move them out of our way. In Matthew 21, and Jesus answered and said to them, truly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you shall not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it shall happen. And all things you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. In James 5, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. I love that verse. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man, and he had a nature just like ours, and he prayed that it might not rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Can you imagine Langley without rain for three years and six months? And he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. When we come to our Heavenly Father with our petitions, it is incumbent upon us to ask with specifics in mind and to avoid generalities. In Luke 11, now suppose one of your fathers is asked by his son for a fish. Will he not give him a snake instead of a fish? Will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? Notice that the son, in the example Jesus gave, did not just come and say that he was hungry, but that he asked for a specific, a fish, and he asked for an egg. He was asking specifically. When we ask for healing, for the sick and the ailing, we must pray for them 
by name. And ask for the healing of the ailments that they are suffering. If we know the names of the frontline workers in this time of COVID-19, we should mention them. When praying for the salvation of unbelievers, and we know some, we should use their names. James 5, is, any, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. As we ask our Heavenly Father for his continued blessing in our lives, let us not forget to be grateful at all times. <clears throat> for 1 Thessalonians instructs us, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In Psalm 18, David tells us, therefore, I will give thanks to you among the nations, O Lord. He had a full, overflowing heart. And he continues, and I will sing praises to your name. In Psalm 107, he writes, Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hallelujah. His wonderful works. If we want to experience the joy of answered prayer, we must first come to the Father as his children in faith, knowing that he hears our asking and is the all-powerful, loving God. Whatever you and I are facing, the victory is ours. Mountains can be moved. Lives can be saved. In 1 Corinthians 15, but Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I get a little excited, sorry. Now, to him who is able to fill your life with his joy and give you the victory, may he make you shine like the stars in his heavens, and may his countenance shine upon you, each of you, and give you his peace. Amen and amen. Should you want to get in touch with me, you can, through Home Church Langley on YouTube, or by email at dave-arlene, A-R-L-E-N-E, -E, at telus.net. Thank you for your time.